Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at a beautiful web-based application called Plask. So for those who've been wondering about how they can easily make mocaps, you like to do some motion captures really, really quick, but you don't want to spend too much time setting up or probably you don't have the buck to buy expensive motion capture suits or even paying for lots of lots of stuff. This service right here is free and it is just amazing. The whole idea is for you to be able to turn up your mobile device record whatever you want and automatically generate motion capture data from that. At the same time, if you already have a movie file or you have a video file that you've recorded previously that contains motions, you can also take advantage of that and generate motion capture data from that. So if you simply go over to plask.ai, you would notice that we have something that is pretty simple. So first things you need to do is you need to create an account and this is supported for a whole lot of browsers like Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and also Safari. And what more do you need? Once you have everything going, you can simply click on get started and this would open up the app page. So within this app page, there's a couple of things that you can do. Getting started, if you click on the plus sign here, you can load up a video that you want to actually work with. So in this case, I'm just gonna click on open and select that video, click on confirm. And the video which I'm using is exactly the same video that was on the page. Since I wasn't able to capture a video, so I decided to make use of what they had on their website as, you know, a resource and test out if this tool actually works exactly how they said it will. So the next thing which you can do here is you can preview the video however you want, and you can play with the length of the video and specify the segments you like to capture data from. So in this case, I'm just going to let this be, press the playback button, see what we have, doesn't look bad. Next thing you need to do, click on extract motion, put a name. So I'm just going to call this dancing. So let's just get that in. And of course, hit the enter button or click on OK. And this would extract the motion. Now, extracting your motion can take a couple of seconds all the way to minutes. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and wait for this to get done. And once this is done, it opens back onto this page. And within this page is where you can start doing all of the nice things. So first off, before you even talk about how you can play with this dancing animation, which is definitely something you find here. Let's drag and drop a mannequin. So you can click drag and drop and get a mannequin there. And actually, if you click on the drop down, or you know, if you click on this, you notice that this is the bind pose. Navigating across this is super easy. You can simply do that by holding down Alt on the keyboard with your left mouse button, you can obit. Alt on the keyboard with your right mouse button, you can pan and you can use your mouse wheel to simply zoom in and zoom out. So. With this here, if you like to bind this character for retargeting, you need to make sure that you have a character available on your viewport. Go over to the retargeting section and bind it. Now, if this isn't mapped properly, this button would be checked as mapped, but if it is, then this automatically gets checked. Something else which you need to know is just like in every other app that deals with retargeting, if you click on any of these nodes, automatically it selects the node on the model. So in this case, I'm just gonna select that and this, and you can see that in action. Now, if you look all the way down here, you notice we have a timeline, which I think needs a couple of work. So with this here, how we can preview the motion that we just extracted is by simply clicking on the dancing motion that we've made, go all the way here and drop it. And once we do that, you would notice that our timeline now has a couple of motions. So in this case, if I press the playback, or if I just simply play this, we can see it. Let's stop that. It also makes sense to keep in mind that at this point, you can preview any of this is actually called visualization. So if we right click on the bind pose and click on visualization, we have that. And if I click on the dancing, right click and click on visualization, you would notice that we have this. So in this case, we can visualize this however we want and the motion doesn't look bad at all. Now, if you like to visualize this with different characters, you can also notice that you all have a couple of GLTB characters here. So I can click on one and just simply click on visualize and you can see that there, click, drag and drop in. And of course you can see that, right click, visualize, or just simply click on visualization. Let's do that. And automatically you're going to notice that we have this, all right? And you can play back in whatever speed that you want. So once you have this ready, depending on the mannequin that you have selected, you can now easily export this. And exporting this is super easy, right click, go all the way down to export, click on the export button, select the format that you want, select the motion you like to export. If you like to export all of them, you can do that. If you like to just simply export dancing, you can do that and then click on export. Now, once your object has been exported, you can now go ahead and put this into Maya, Blender, or any other DCC app of choice. 
Plast.ai is a beautiful tool, but of course there's a couple of things that it doesn't have now. So despite the fact that you have access to collaborating with different team members, it is worth knowing that there is no undo function. So if you're working with Plask, there is no undo function, no way. So if I go ahead and select any of this part and I tap E on the keyboard and I do something, let's say for example, I try to do this, you can't undo that. I can't hit Ctrl and Z on the keyboard to undo it. So there is no undo function. Something else which is also available on this tool that I think might need a bit more of an explanation is the keyframing. So now that we've made this, like I mentioned earlier, we can't undo whatever thing that we've done. So I'm just gonna set that and keep it that way. If we click on the plus sign, you would notice that we have the animation layers. And it simply means that once you have this here, if we click on this button, we sort of make an animation right here. Now there is no logical description of how this actually works, but you know, it just works. So what you can do is you can have this layer and uh, you can make some tweaks to that and keep it that way. And this way, once you press the playback button, it stays like so. If we also go over here and we select these other button and you notice nothing happens there. If we click on the plus sign, we're creating a brand new layer. I just need to click down, select here and make a change. And once you do that, click on this button and technically you've automatically made a change to the entire animation. So this way you can go ahead and tweak this and for sure, if you're thinking about playing with the manipulators, they are simple as W, E, and R. So these are like the basic ones that you have. And W, E, and R is more of an industry standard for move, scale, and rotate. So in this case, if you're just thinking about making quick key animations, yes, you can. It's not as convenient as you might want it to be. Although you can change this from Eula all the way to Cotanion, but you don't really see a whole lot of changes with it. So in this case, I can do that and click on this button to add another keyframe. And that way we can transit from a key like this over to a key like that. And we can do the same thing. So I can also go ahead and select this and let's bring that down to this point, go back to this layer. So we don't have like that automatic layer switching, which is something I think lots of people would want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select this right here, click to add a keyframe. And that is how this sort of works. So if you're thinking about fine tuning the entire motion, Yes, you can. You can fine tune the motion directly here, but it is also worth knowing that it is not the most convenient platform for you to fine tune your motion. I will simply suggest go over to Motion Builder or you can go over to iClone, you know, the recent version that is coming out, or you can do that in Maya or Blender. And that way you'll be able to have all of the flexibilities of fine tuning this. But either ways, if you're looking for a tool that you can use to make your motion captures really, really quick on the fly, you don't want to spend too much money on buying expensive motion capture suits or buying lots of cameras just to capture the motions this tool is something that you should consider checking out you shout out to the folks at plastic.ai for making a beautiful tool like this available and also making it for free for everyone to test out and for those who like to check it out i'm gonna put a link in the description that can bring you right here where you can check out this beautiful tool and see all of the amazing things that you can do with it tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you like something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.